if you if all of you will try to move that mic around so uh, Randy will be able to pick it up back there that would be great I want to thank you Chairman Waters and Commissioners I'm a little nervous so I'm trying to read through this for y'all I'm Philip Madry I've been a citizen of Bogan County since 1969 in my opinion one of the greatest privileges of living in a free country is the right to own land in 1969 when I was 25 years old I purchased a farm in Pantoga it was a good feeling to have a piece of land that I could do with as I liked. In 1981, I had the opportunity to purchase a 581-acre farm in Blunts Creek, where I now live. <clears throat> I am now nearing the end of my farming career. At this time, I'm exploring things that I could do with the land that would ensure security for my wife and my family after I am gone. <clears throat> One option I am considering is a solar farm. Someone raised the question, who would clean up the site at the end of its useful life? Well, it would be the same as if you built a house or any other building. The owner of the property would be responsible for any cleanup and no one else. <clears throat> I'm asking you commissioners not to put a, any restrictions on what I can do with my land by imposing a moratorium on solar farms. <clears throat> a moratorium would be the same as a court-ordered injunction restricting the use of the land. Again, I'm asking you, please, don't impose a moratorium on solar farms. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, number two. Number two, Steve. Thank you, Chairman Waters. Um, I'm speaking today both as a um, concerned Beaufort County citizen and as a taxpayer and as an electric rate payer. There are a lot of issues dealing with solar farms or solar facilities, which is a better term for them, that need to be thought through. Um, there are issues dealing with the decommissioning. There have been other states where the taxpayers have gotten stuck with paying for decommissioning when these facilities have served their useful life and uh, they've just been abandoned. So we don't, don't need to have Beaufort County's taxpayers in that situation. Um, also, the way some of them have been built, they're unsightly. Um, John Droz was in speaking to your committee and I thought he had some very thoughtful ideas about how to uh, write rules in terms of buffers and in terms of um, also the financial protection for the county and gave some good examples of what other counties are doing in that regard. Now as a taxpayer and an electric rate payer, I wish it was within your purview to do a permanent moratorium because this whole solar enterprise and the wind enterprise are crony capitalism. They aren't free enterprise. They could never stand on their own two feet in a free market. They depend entirely on a boatload of government subsidies and government mandates and other special favors. Without those, they would be non-economic. So basically, as a taxpayer, um, at every level of government, they're a leech on the taxpayer. At the county level, your 80% exemption that all of these facilities have is taking away from the tax revenues of Beaufort County. That's not fair to the other taxpayers. As an electric rate payer, I look at the fact that in Germany, which has gone hog wild on wind and solar, they're paying three times for electricity what we pay in North Carolina. We don't need to go down that path. And I can have some sympathy for landowners, but not when it's coming out of my pocket in my electric bill and my tax bill. Now, also in terms of the um, situation with the electric, um, a lot of the problem, first of all, it's more expensive to produce solar and wind than it is conventional electricity. But on top of that, it's intermittent. Solar doesn't make electricity when the sun isn't shining, wind doesn't when the wind isn't blowing. The result is there has to be a lot of expensive backup for that. So all of that adds tremendously to the cost. Duke Energy has already cited the higher cost of renewable energy for at least one, ta one electric rate increase here in North Carolina. We don't need to go further down that path. Everything that can be done 
to get away from that path, the better. I know you don't have that power. What I'm urging you to do today is let's step back, let's look at all of this, and at least get our buffers and our protection for the taxpayers in place and not let this stuff go willy-nilly. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening and thank you for your time. Um, this petition that I'm presenting to you clearly displays that people from all over Beaufort County, including Bell Haven, Bath, Aurora, Cypress Landing, Wichards Beach Road, Chacoinity, Pine Town, Voice of America Road, Long Acre, Blunts Creek, Trainers Creek, and the City of Washington, among other areas, are in support of this moratorium and a stricter ordinance. These signatures represent taxpayers, voters, landowners, farmers, teachers, business owners, healthcare workers, ministers, custodians, mothers, fathers, grandmothers, and grandfathers. People who desire to protect their property rights, freedom, and the many wonderful aspects of Beaufort County. These individuals want a moratorium, appropriate setbacks, and the protection and promotion of health, wel welfare, and good. Working to present this petition before you, in addition to working 40 hours per week and at least one job, if not multiple jobs, to keep our household supported, we have gladly invested our extra time in distributing this petition to protect our county, showing a substantial and diverse support base throughout the whole entire county. We need you as commissioners, our commissioners, to join us with your support. I have the petition. I just would like to make a copy before I hand it to y'all, if that's okay. If you will, give that okay. to the clerk. Mm -hmm. Can I do a copy? Yes, thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Can I ask a question? Nope. Can I get you in the hallway? No, no, no. Yeah. Okay, uh, Deb. Thank you. Um, as looking back out uh, our backyard and out over the amazing farmland that surrounds our home, my heart does ache thinking about, uh, I have my little granddaughter here that we go back there and we see the solar farm, just the weather station, and my other grandchildren looking back and we go on nature walks and God's creation, we love it. And so with that on my heart, uh, it kind of aches at the thought of this view being destroyed. It's beautiful farmland, the rich black soil of Teresia right there in the heart of Teresia. The current ordinance for our county allows solar panels 50 feet from my dwelling and not my property boundary. This is truly disturbing to me, not just for me, but for every citizen of Beaufort County. I began to think about how suddenly these companies have an interest. It has been talked about, but no investors jumped in with their own funding to make it happen because it is totally not cost effective in any way. It is only now with federal funding that companies have jumped into this, even though there's valid research that shows this isn't needed and will not produce what is predicted. There isn't an investor out there in the entire county, country who would put their money in these projects without the upfront federal funding that is what now lines their pockets. We have already seen countless bankruptcies and lawsuits that are pending with solar companies who have not fulfilled their upfront promises once they receive their fe federal subsidies. They care nothing for our county constituents, your constituents. They only care about their bank accounts, even though they talk a sweet game. I am overwhelmed with sadness that now our own tax dollars are being used to damage our own property value and that we seem to have no personal say in the matter. As the truth unfolds, and I am sure as commissioners, you have a better understanding of what is at stake for our count county, that you will not hesitate to protect us for enacting a moratorium on your constituents' behalf. 
please, I'm asking you, enact an immediate one-year moratorium and please consider placing that Wilkinson Solar Project under this moratorium. Please seek to establish greater setbacks in, a, uh, in an updated ordinance to protect families and businesses. And please take the time a, mor a moratorium would provide to do further research, to stand up with courage for your own people and get a truly sound ordinance written that protects our county. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Uh, Jennifer? Good evening, gentlemen. I would like to thank Commissioners Buzio, Booth, and Bren for the extensive investigative work regarding a solar moratorium for Beaufort County. Having audited two of these proceedings and listening to various debates concerning the issue and criteria, I feel we have only scratched the surface of a very deep and broad subject. As stated earlier by my fellow citizens and confirmed by Bu uh, Commissioner Buzio, the completion of Wilkerson Solar will result in over one million tax loss to Beaufort County. This is including the other solar farms that are already in operation. Since the panels that are proposed are approximately 30 years in longevity, the result would be a $30 million tax loss for our county. These panels are not needed until 2032 stated by Dominion Power. There needs to be a continued discussion of setbacks regarding the panels and substation and also a discussion of the devaluation or loss of individuals' lifetime investments, their homes and property. For there is no defined regulation for panel remediation or procurement of bonds. Beaufort County is a Tier 1 county, and being situated on the Pamlico Peninsula, we are blessed with unlimited abundant resources. These resources are coveted by many states as well as countries around the world. We have the second largest fish estuary in the United States, some of the most productive fertile farmland in the world. We have unfettered wildlife consisting of thousands of species, including the endangered red wolf. We have an unlimited water supply, although sometimes too much water, but we have fresh air and a safe environment. But until we value these precious resources as a sustaining life force for ourselves and children, we will always remain a tier one county. Please do not sell us out to fast talking salespeople and billion dollar tax subsidized machi machines. I respectfully request for you to vote to, to instate a one year moratorium to protect the citizens and resources of Beaufort County. And after witnessing mass shootings and a world that is truly in, in jeopardy, I ask you to instate this moratorium to bring us peace for at least one year and to logically come up with sound solutions. Thank you. Thank you. Kathy. Good evening, gentlemen. Um, I'm Kathy Hardy, and I live in the community of Small on Highway 306, about five miles west of Aurora. The south side of the river has its share of issues, but this is about Beaufort County as a whole. Um, the uh, land is, with these solar farms, the land is pretty much ruined for future farming. So I'm here today also to support the request of a one-year moratorium. The combined tax loss for the county would be over a million dollars. An example would be the cost of, when the time comes, dismantling and disposing of the solar panels. This one-year moratorium would help in order to work out the logistics to prevent further detriment to other communities such as small and property owners garnering a large tax loss for the county at the expense of its citizens. So please consider this moratorium request for the taxpaying citizens of Beaufort County. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, Kevin. Good evening. I'm actually reading this on behalf of Melody Woolard um, of Bath. She's sick with shingles tonight, so I'm going to read this for you. 
says, I am Melody Willard. I reside at 121 Berkeley Lane, North Carolina, Bath, North Carolina. I'm speaking tonight to convey that I cannot bear to see rich farmland taken out of cultivation and turned into an unsightly eyesore that has offered little to no benefit to our communities that anyone has demonstrated thus far. Actually, the opposite has occurred with homes that are devalued, natural animal habitats that are destroyed, along with the beauty and function of our croplands. Our county should not be allowed to become a toxic waste dump for the people of other states in order for them to get their green credits. Because we are not in cities or gated communities, we are at the mercy of our county commissioners to protect the rural citizens, as other citizens in the county are protected by restrictive covenants. Because this is uncharted territory in the realm of the long-lasting determinants of health and economics, it is your responsibility as our elected officials to take more time to think, to enact this moratorium, and to rewrite the current ordinances before allowing this rich asset in our community to be depleted. Have you considered the impact of, of, of tourism and growth that you are allowing by letting these facilities happen, or the decline in families who may want to consider making this their home, who will no longer do so because of this. Along with these losses, have you stopped to consider that with the current eight projects already in Beaufort County, we have lost $545,000 of tax money. In the Wilkinson Solar, if the Wilkinson Solar Project goes through, our losses as your constituents will total well over $1 million. Not one of these facilities generates anywhere near this amount in taxes. Rather, their taxes, they are deferred. You have the power to stop this bleeding that will have many long-term effects on every citizen of Beaufort County. Thank you for your time and consideration, and please think of us, your constituents first, and let those who are only here because of the government um, substances find less populated areas of which there are so many to fill their pockets. Thank you. Thank you. Diane? <coughs> Good evening. I was on the list to speak this evening and then I almost backed out um, um, as I was driving into the city limits to come to work today. Um, all of that changed. You see, I work in child care. I oversee the care of children ages six weeks to five years old, and as I greeted my staff and the parents and I interacted with the children, I became overwhelmed to tears. <sighs> Suddenly the thought of their future flooded me, visions of additional solar panel facilities that also include dangerous substations decimating open ground and precious farmland tore through my mind like hur hurricane force winds, and I knew God was telling me that I needed to stand up for these babies. I wish I could hold up pictures of each of them, but confidentiality won't allow it. So I ask you to think of your own children and your own grandchildren and let those images stand in, my, in the place of my work children, who I think of as my own. I, I pushed back anger because I did not want to operate in that realm, and God instead replaced that anger with an intentionality to speak up. I left my office after my red eyes cleared and I took the time to stand and drink in the sight of those precious children, those future Beaufort County adults who are even now your constituents. As I pondered them, I saw children who will attend schools in every corner of this county, Northeast, Bath, Washington, Chacoinity, and all parts in between when taking into account the Christian private and charter schools here and then quite possibly Beaufort County Community College. I implore you to think big, think long, and think outside the box and well into our future. What may seem and look like great immediate gain for some is quite possibly a very short-term gain with horrific, long-lasting, and detrimental ramifications. So much is still unknown and, what is investi and when investigated, much has been revealed. God has placed each one of you in your position for a reason and in my mind, 31 of those reasons are the children in my care every day. A portion of their health and well-being is held in the uplifting of your hand tonight or the sounding of your voice to support immediately enacting the one-year moratorium that will give time to look at proper setback distances from homes, businesses, and schools. At prior commissioners' meetings and in personal conversations with some of you, it has been stated that Wilkinson LLC in Teresia could not be placed under a newly enacted moratorium. However, after personal spe personally speaking with the county planner's office this morning, 
there are no permits for Wilkinson LLC that have been issued in our county. Since there is no permit in place, I cite NCGS 153A 340H, which clearly states that either a temporary moratorium of up to 60 days or a full moratorium of 61 days or more would not apply to, and I quote, any project for which valid building permits issued pursuant to GS 153A 357 is outstanding. I'm sorry, quote. your time is up. I have a copy of that ordinance if you would like it in full is this your it's only not copy ordinance it's a statute is this the only copy yeah but i have more okay all right stacy she's not here okay uh any comments from any commissioner yeah i just wanted to know uh the young lady that uh got up and spoke how many signatures did you have on that uh um, a little over 150, but that was in like three weeks or two and a half weeks. Okay, thank you. That's all I have. Anyone else? Uh, and as I think you stated they're from various parts of the county. Um, yes, sir. All over Chocolate, Boys of America Road, all the way out to um, Traders Creek, Bell Haven, Pantego, Pine Town, all over the county. Okay, thank you. I uh, some of the comments were made during the public. Uh, by some of the individuals where you were quoting the loss of 540,000 a million this North Carolina has a state statute that says that we can only charge at the local level 20% of the cost of the equipment uh, as it goes out there so the, the losses that you're talking about is a difference between 20% and being able to tax at 100% of the value just wanted to make that clear if it was that if we were allowed to do a hundred percent the other thing is is somebody mentioned that it was 30 million over a 30 year period it depreciates every year it depreciates over is it eight I think it's 18 years and it gets down to a salvage value of 25 percent of the initial cost but just to clarify that need a motion to come out of the public hearing so so motion by Commissioner Brennan is there second Mr. Langley okay all those in favor raise your right hand okay thank you I uh, we're down to 